Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Pat's Mythos, my name is Pat. Today I'm going to be wrapping up what I read in April and talking about what I plan to read in May. Okay, just to look at the year so far as we finish up April, I've now finished 17 books so far in 2023. And I would say that April was a very good reading month, probably one of my best yet in terms of just like the average rating of the books I finished. So let's go ahead and start wrapping it up by talking about the first book that I finished in April. So I started reading this book in March and it kind of just bled into the first few days of April, but just to keep it proper, I always include books based on the month I finished them. And that book is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I gave Pet Cemetery four and a half stars at first. But after a few weeks, as I kind of simmered on the book, I actually bumped that rating up to five stars. This book was just unreal in the sense that Stephen King takes a reader on a ride inside the mind of a grief-stricken father that you just, it's unlike almost anything I've ever read. And I wouldn't say it's the scariest Stephen King book I've read, but it's definitely like the most visceral and anxiety-inducing and just kind of like a thrill ride where you're scared to see what's going to happen next, even if... The things that happen aren't necessarily like scary jump scare, kind of like, a you know, The Shining or It. It's not that kind of scary, but nonetheless, I think it actually freaked me out more just because of the way it made me feel listening to it. So after I simmered on Pet Cemetery a bit and really let it sink in, I just can't believe <laughs> Stephen King wrote this book. It is wild, and I really, really loved it. It's probably now going to end up somewhere in my top five-ish Stephen King books. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I had seen the movie before and it was good, but this book is incredible. I think Stephen King's approach here was just magnificent. You know, he starts it a little bit slower than a lot of his books and lets it kind of build up and you get to know the character and the family at the center of the story. And it's such a service to what ends up happening in the story. I, yeah, it, it was just awesome. It'll probably end up being somewhere in my top books of the year, as well as one of my favorite Stephen King books that I've read. Okay, and the next book, I started this in March and finished it right at the start of April, was The Way of Edan by Philip Chase. I gave The Way of Edan four out of five stars. If you're relatively familiar with the characters around Booktube, you're probably familiar with Philip Chase and know that he's an awesome Booktuber and produces some of the best content out there. And I'm very happy to say that his talents as a Booktuber bled perfectly into his talents as a writer. He definitely knows what he's doing, and he definitely has his influences on his sleeve as he writes this story. You can tell that, you know, this is a start of something potentially very awesome, you know, the start of a trilogy. I really enjoyed seeing the influences of the Anglo-Saxon Norse stuff that I know that's what his scholarly escapades have been in. Very good combination of that classic fantasy feeling with elves, dwarves, the things that we all came to love as we started the genre, especially if you love Lord of the Rings. You see a little bit of that, but you also see a little bit of the modern take on things as well, which really made for an awesome combination. Very excited to see where the story goes in the next two books of the Adan trilogy. And next, I listened to The Hod King by Josiah Bancroft, and I gave it four stars. So for a lot of people, this is considered the best or their favorite in the Books of Babel quartet. To me, it probably is my favorite, but I found that all these books so far, the first three, have all been sitting around four stars. You know, I like them. I wouldn't say I loved any of them, but, you know, they're all very interesting. They're all very funny. And Josiah Bancroft's prose and writing is just very whimsical. It, it pretty much continued here in the third book, my feelings on the first two. I did like it maybe a little bit more just because of the, some changes he makes to the overall structure of the story that he's telling. And I can see why it's most people's favorite. Um, now, I'm excited to see where the final book takes us, as I know it's very divisive, but yes. Hod King, very solid, very good, and yeah, liked it just about as much as the first two books in the Books of Babel. And next, for the granddaddy of the month of April for me, this book took me pretty much from, I think it was April 6th through the last day of the month to read, and that is Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson. I'll get right into it and say this book gets five out of five out of five stars, 10, 10 out of five stars if you want to call it that. It is just awesome. It's, this is everything you could probably ever want in a fantasy book. It's got it all. It's got emotional moments. It's got action that's just unparalleled to a lot of that I've read in the genre. It's got insane magic. It's got intense lore. That it just builds on the first two books in Malazan. And it is dense at times, but if you power through, it is just such a rewarding book to read and is by far my favorite of the first three Malazan books and probably somewhere in my top books of the year so far. I don't know, maybe one or two. I haven't really thought too much about it, but 
it was incredible and lived up to the hype in a lot of ways. And yeah, I, as I get into my TBR for the month of April, I needed a little bit of a breather after this one because it was heavy and intense. I highly recommend if you're a skeptic about Malazan and they say, read the first three books and see how you feel. I have now read the first three books after being a pretty major skeptic about whether or not I'd like Malazan. And I'm proud to say that I am no longer a skeptic and I'm along for the ride. And all three books have been awesome, especially Memories of Ice. Okay, and the last book that I finished in April, I listened to this on audio, and this was Exhalation Stories by Ted Chiang. This is a sci-fi short story collection, and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. So I just have to say, this is a really, really great short story collection. Even though I'm somebody who hasn't read a lot of short stories, I just have to say imp how impressive it is that there's not a single you know, one-off bad story or a story that I just wasn't a fan of. I really liked, if not loved, every single story in this collection. There's not a bad one in here. And they explore all types of ideas across sci-fi, you know, whether it's far future robotics and stuff like that, or more modern day, you know, AI questions and that sort of thing. Even going to historical settings where time travel is possible and more magical feeling to sci-fi. He covers all the bases here into a really varied collection. And I think that almost anybody could find something to like in here or like them all the way I did. I'm planning to definitely read more short stories in the future. I've got some on my TBR, including Ted Chiang's other short story collection. And I'm really looking forward to just getting a little bit more experience in the medium because I thought Exhalation was just awesome. And I'm really excited to see you know, what short stories can accomplish if they're anything like this collection. So that's everything I read in April of 2023. Five books finished and, you know, not a bad one in there. Some very, very great ones as well. And I'm looking forward now to talking about what I plan to read in May. So I'm a few days into May as I'm filming this. So I've already started a couple books that I'd like to talk about now. The first is a horror novella called The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval. This was actually supposed to be on my April TBR, but because Memories of Vice took me so long, I ended up kind of pushing it to the start of May. And I'll probably finish it pretty soon, probably today or tomorrow. Uh, here at the beginning of May because it's only about 95 pages. It's pretty quick and I'm about halfway through it already. And I have to say, it is awesome. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. I won't go too far into it because I'll probably talk about it on my May wrap up, but so far I'm really loving it. So I'm looking forward to wrapping that up. And I started my first audiobook of the month of May and that is The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. That's right. I'm starting the most divisive book that I've heard about <laughs> in a, quite a while and looking forward to wrapping up the books of Babel and seeing where I land so far. Um, just a few hours into the audiobook. So far, it's, you know, it's good. I, I wouldn't say I'm loving it quite as much as The Hod King so far. I'll just have to see the way things shake out. I don't, you know, I don't know how it's going to be, but I'm excited to see where it goes. And so those are the two books I've started, and I still need to figure out the rest of my month. And I'm having trouble deciding, and I had a cool idea to help me just make up my mind. And that would be to have my dog help me pick my TBR. So I probably have about time left in the month to read about two solid sized books uh, through the rest of May. So I picked about four books and I'm gonna have my dog help by helping me narrow that down to two. The way that I'm gonna have my dog help me narrow it down is putting them together by genre. So I had two historical fiction books and then two fantasy, kind of historical fantasy books that I was also looking to read. And so let's look at what those books are now. So for the two historical fiction books, I have The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolles and The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. So just to give a little bit of background on those two books, The Lincoln Highway is written by Amor Tolles, as I mentioned, and he actually wrote one of my all-time favorite books, which is A Gentleman in Moscow. It's also historical fiction. So, you know, hearing that he wrote another historical fiction here in The Lincoln Highway, I'd be really excited to see what it's all about. It is a little bit different. It takes place, I want to say, in 1950s America. It has to do with some boys who escape, I think, from some kind of juvenile prison and have to make a cross-country trek. So it sounds like maybe like a coming of age, you know, road trip story. And I'm all for it. I think that Amor Tolls could really land an awesome book here if, he just, if it's anything like A Gentleman in Moscow. So we'll see if my dog picks that one. And the other book has also been on my TBR for a while. And as I said, that's The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. The Poisonwood Bible has to do, I want to say it's a missionary family from Belgium who moved to the Belgian Congo in Africa in, I want to say, the early 20th century. And I don't know a ton of history about the Belgian Congo, but the little I do know is that it was a terrible and brutal place. And um, I don't know too much else about this book, 
But just given the historical setting and to learn a little bit about what happened in the Belgian Congo, I'm really looking forward to it. From the little I know about this, I'm pretty sure it's a heavy read given what I mentioned about the history of Belgian Congo. So I think it will be fascinating and enlightening, probably teach a lot about the dark history there and have some pretty powerful themes to think on. So that would also be a really solid pick if my dog chooses it. And for the other two books for my dog to choose between, I have The Winter King by Bernard Cornwell and The Last Light of the Sun by Guy Gabriel Kay. So those are both historical fantasy-ish type books. I haven't actually read any Bernard Cornwell, so I'm really looking forward to reading The Warlord Chronicles, which starts with The Winter King. And if that gets picked, then I'd be happy to start that trilogy now here in May and make my way through it through the rest of the summer months. And if it doesn't get picked, then I have The Last Light of the Sun, which would be my third Guy Gabriel K book. And I know it's not really held in the highest levels of his works, but I've heard pretty good things about it. And I think it's a Viking, Anglo-Saxon, Norse, you know, Northern Europe setting from as far as I know. So that could be a really good pick too. And who doesn't love a great GGK standalone? And so that's the books that my dog is going to help me choose between. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce him to you. Okay, I'm here with my dog, Louie. He's going to be helping me today to pick my TBR. What do you have to say to the people, Louie? Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Okay, I'm going to take him downstairs. And the way I'm going to do this is lay out two books out in front of him, put a treat on each, and whichever treat he eats first will be the book that I read. Okay, here we are with the first book. Louis has a choice between the Poisonwood Bible or the Lincoln Highway. Go, Lou, get your treat. Go. Okay. Looks like I'm going to be reading the Poisonwood Bible first. And of course, he's got to get the other treat. Sorry, Lincoln Highway. I'll read you later. Now that he's made the first choice, next, Louie will be choosing between The Last Light of the Sun and The Winter King. Go, Lou, Get your treat. Okay. Good choice. Last Light of the Sun. Didn't know you were a Guy Gabriel K fan, but I'm okay with that. So there you have it, folks. I'm going to be reading The Poisonwood Bible and The Last Light of the Sun in the month of May. I'm not sure what order I'm going to read them in. I'll just have to see kind of based on my mood which one I'll pick up once I finish The Ballad of Black Tom, but I'm very excited to read both of these. And yeah, should be a great reading month. So if you've stuck around here till the end of the video, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about how your month of April went and what you've got planned for May. I'll look forward to discussing that with you down below. Other than that, I hope you have a very good day. Thank you very much. Bye.